Now, uh, can I just bring in now? You you asked me about naturalism. I'll come back to that. Come so to that. Before we do, somebody asked a question. Uh, uh, when are we going to chat Go about? Up? So I guess it begins now when we discuss uh, the trio and, and naturalism and so yeah. this will... yeah, but, uh, what, what is the question? I mean, when are we going to chat about Atul Bose? That is the question. So uh, oh, well, that I'm going to uh, talk about that. Yes. This is all the context before, I mean, the, the development of artists like Atul Bose and, and placing it into a historical perspective. And, and that's, that's exactly what you've done so far. So now we come to you know, 1920s as... as yeah, the thing is that I knew Atul Bose, uh, you know, I, I mean, I used to do live drawing and he, he was a very fine teacher, but very modest, uh, stood at the back, a neglected figure, hardly remembered by anybody that he was absolutely the center of things for many years. And this is where I want to come to. Um, in the 1920s, all academic tradition so she has had, had gone to Canada and then to America, exiled. Um, you know, Poninder Bosch, a very talented young sculptor, had then settled in uh, Perth in Scotland. <coughs> They're all fled. The only academic tradition that was strong, but under attack, was in Bombay. A whole lot of them, Durandar, Abal al-Rahiman, you name it, the, the, but, but the, even the art school and European teachers just said, oh, they were, they're terrible. They have no sense of Indianness. They're not really true Indians. So this was going on. Academic art uh, was the, a kind of uh, really totally now rubbished as it were. At this juncture, it's very, uh, Bombay, they were still fighting. It was a rear guard, a guard action. But Calcutta, let's take this. So what happens? In Indian Society, Society of Oriental Art is this big uh, venue. All the paintings by Orientalists, in other words, Oriental Art, um, Bengal School were shown there with, with the British patronage as well. The government gave money, partly because they didn't want, uh, couldn't face the uh, you know, uh, so-called terrorist bombs, you know, uh, the, the nationalist, uh, extremely nationalist, Profulo Chaki, Kudiram Bose, Aurobindo Aurobind Ghosh. So they wanted to uh, support cultural nationalism, as they claim. Uh, <clears throat> and nothing yeah. else. I mean, they just supported, they didn't, they, they, they did not allow, uh, uh, you know, that could anything that was not culturally nationalistic to be a part yeah, yeah, of. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But culturalism is safer. You don't get the bombs thrown at you. <laughs> because, you know, Arvind Ghosh was uh, involved with the trial and, uh, you know, lots of things were going on. Very explosive period from 1905 to 1920. A lot of very um, young uh, Indians who were dedicated to, uh, you know, anarchists and uh, nationalist extremists. Okay, so we are at this juncture that you, you have Bengal school, you have modernism, and you have the old academic artists. These are, these are the three. What happens next is very interesting. You find among the younger generation, that includes Atul Bose, and I'm coming to that, uh, but in Calcutta, but also in Bombay, they began to reformulate, you know, um, academic art is art of representation, a realistic, you might say, faithful, illusionistic representation. So they began to reformulate um, academic art. I call it a new naturalism. And this is where I need to explain. Earlier academic art, particularly again, greatest figure one has to think uh, was Ravi Varma, but there, there were others too, Muller and so on. <clears throat> um, academic art wanted to create a national allegory. The, 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 the nation's uh, heritage through Victorian mode of painting. But, and so you see this, this kind of obsession with history, uh, can I call it historicism? 
you know, the, the notion of the past. Abhinandanath challenged this, of course, on the basis of style, uh, that flat style. But he too believed that you needed to archaeologize the past. And he was also, in many ways, choosing this very similar themes. With Abhinandanath, the very important uh, point I wish to make is that he also was deeply interested in Mughal culture. So he wasn't, uh, uh, you know, really pressing Hindu ideas. I mean, our heritage, mixed heritage, Mughal heritage. He's known for Arabian Nights, right? So that's a very Oh, good. No one before that. His first one, you know, Shah Jahan, last, uh, you know, moments of Shah Jahan. And if you look at all his stuff, <clears throat> He used to call uh, himself Pir Ali Brahmin. Uh, Pir Ali had been corrupted by the Muslims <laughs> as, a, as a joke, uh, Mughal. Uh, oh, so, <clears throat> uh, yeah, going back to them. So um, this was going on, the idea of the past, historicism, new uh, naturalism, which has to do also with the nation, was uh, now, had a very different approach, partly influenced by number of things happening in India. Mahatma Gandhi's launching of first, uh, you know, uh, early movement in Bihar and in Gujarat, and then his non-cooperation movement. But what Gandhi did was very interesting. He goes uh, back to the village. I have actually perhaps uh, daringly called him the, the greatest primitivist of the 20th century. Why? Intermediate technology. Go back to the village. And, and he was against the machine, terribly against the machine. Uh, so the village, the countryside, as well as the region, from national uh, pan-Indian allegory, to very specific regional identity. <coughs> In Calcutta, the, he was an ISIS, but Guru Shaladatta created this notion of local culture, dance, song, and, and poems. So this was going on. And that's the background against which the greatest figure here, uh, a modernist, of course, was Jamini Roy, going back to the region, the, you know, the village, and so on. Now, coming to academic artists, um, about 1920s, uh, Jamini Rai comes out, out of art school. Othul was a very good student, uh, also comes out of art school. Heman Wajna had left the art school in Calcutta uh, and uh, completed his education elsewhere. They had come out and they didn't know what they could do. I mean, perilous artists. So they would <laughs> gather together at, I think, Hemin Majunda's uh, studio. Uh, yes. Uh, and um, they would sit and try and say, what can they do? Well, don't forget, Indian Society of Oriental Art had, had taken over, monopolized all exhibitions. So they couldn't show anywhere in Calcutta. It was a terrible situation. So they began to think of an association which you challenge. And there, uh, you know, they um, either um, published this, um, uh, remember, yes, uh, just one second. Uh, yes, uh, it's uh, in Indian Academy of Art, for instance, um, uh, journal. And then, of course, they also found Academy of Fine Arts. So uh, they wanted to have their own uh, venue uh, for their work to publicize their work, which they began to do in uh, journals, but also their own beautiful publication. But the main thing is their main aim was now to use a representational style, naturalism. Uh, you know, naturalism really means that you try and um, uh, represent nature as it, at it, as it is. But they now uh, go to the everyday subject, intimate subjects, you know, and, and um, kind of very much uh, no longer larger epic themes, very much, you know, particularity, specificity. And uh, so Homan Vajinder 
concentrated on domestic scenes, very much, uh, you know, one or two uh, women, but mainly perhaps even his wife, continuously producing these um, figures and uh, it became a very specific thing. Um, Atul Bose uh, was a very fine portrait painter and he began to develop, I'll come back to this later, but for the moment, he also began to think of very specific things that you mentioned uh, in, in the uh, before, uh, his uh, landscapes. He also does a uh, little later, you know, um, uh, um, Maji's, the boatman, uh, you know, drawing a, a boat, all these uh, genres, uh, subjects, as well as portraiture. So it became very quotidian, very much intimate, very much domestic, and very much regional. I mean, don't look at larger things. Concentrate on what's around you. That's what you're defining as the naturalism, the... Uh, so that is know, the naturalism. This is the alternative naturalism. Alternative, as, as opposed to the modern, uh, the, the formalist modernism of Jami Roy, the, the early Jami Roy, yes. Sergei, then we have this group of three, you know, Jami Roy included again in that, but him and Majumdar and Atul Bose and probably a couple of others, V.C. Uh, yes, uh, yes. You know, a few others, you know, focus a little uh, differently, you know, naturalism, I mean, more intimate, more, uh, uh, you know, what you see in front of you, local scenes, uh, and all of that. So it's almost like, and, and it, given the fact that they actually had a magazine uh, for publishing and exhibiting their works, it was almost like a formal uh, a group or a formal affiliation of sorts, because, uh, you know, the magazine was on for two years, I believe, before it was shut down. Uh, so we almost have a formal affiliation of a different kind of, uh, uh, as you say, naturalism, uh, modernist. Yeah, but you know, but they also got in touch with indirectly uh, invited people from uh, Bombay, for instance. I mean, Haldankar, uh, you know, Kajrekar, all the different figures, and they were also doing very similar things every day at the Talim you know, using a kind of weaver or something. I mean, it's very much that kind of, uh, you know, uh, uh, region and discarding. It's a form of nationalism. And that's what I also want to stress. They were not uh, unpatriotic as uh, you know, the Bengal school would have claimed. They were very much interested in uh, very, you, you know. Use the words uh, intimate and immediate. Uh, intimate, yes. In the past. Uh, 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 and I mean, I mean, this is very intimate, you know, uh, just uh, uh, doing this portrait, uh, uh, semi-nude, or you might say, um, you know, uh, the famous wet sari look, you know, uh, say, uh, showing so the flesh. Obviously, uh, we have, uh, you know, the, 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 the study done by Atul Bose in 1926. Uh, and of course, we see, I think, Amrita Shergil, who had a different education in France. You mean Nandulal and Atul Bose, you mean? No. I, two Boses? I mean, you mean who? No, so we, okay, we are going to, I'm going to ask you about the two Boses and how different. That, 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 okay, that, yes. Uh, what I'm talking about right now is just, I'm referring to the early academic nudes, um, you know, in terms of a formal, and you have alluded to this, that, but you know, like we see a very early work done in 1926 by Atul Bose, uh, uh, the studio corner, right? And then we have works from Amrita Sherag in the 1930s, and then of course him in Majumdar again, 1920. So, it, you know, so it was not just landscape, it was also uh, 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 nudes and portraits, but again, all with that feature of that, as you say, intimate and immediacy. There's something, it is not like a general academic uh, portrait. There is something, intimate about them. Uh, and that would be a good segue into discussing the, uh, the portrait of Ashutosh Mukherjee, which started uh, Bose's career, in fact. I mean, it is a portrait, but yet it is, it is a characteristic. I mean, uh, uh, I mean I'll, let you, uh, I'll let you elucidate on that. Uh, <coughs> no. <coughs> Absolutely right. Um, yes, one thing that I always find with Atul Bose, why I love his drawings. Um, you know, there are two kinds of artworks. Let's say two kinds of painting. Even. One is called, you know, painterly, where the actual painting rests on brushwork, deployment of colors. 
lines don't matter. The other word is linear painting where lines matter. And Atul Bose had very sharp lines, very clear idea. And again, as you, you are right, to be able to concentrate in, on the details. And um, wow. this is where, uh, you know, we look at the Bengal tiger, so-called the famous celebrated drawing. He did it early on. And uh, I mean, people know the story. I mean, do, do I need to? I mean, it's an interesting anecdote. Um, Shall I, uh, I mean, I, Please, you're, please. I, yeah, I'm losing your sound a little, but no, please, anyway. please go ahead. <clears throat> so, Atul Bose, uh, obviously already from you know being trained at art school, he already had developed quite excellent skills in uh, likeness. I mean, likeness is very important in portraiture. I mean, there are some portraits where the person doesn't look like for the portrait, uh, but he had this great uh, skill. Now. Uh, Ashton Mukherjee was this famous educationist and uh, nationalist and a lawyer. So he used to sit in the morning in, the, in his front room and somebody would come and give him oil massage. Uh, so once uh, Atul was arrived there asking very uh, hesitantly because uh, Atul, uh, Ashton Mukherjee was a very powerful, formidable figure. Everybody was terrified of him. 1922, uh, by the way, so early. Yes, uh, yes. And uh, so he said, so Ashton Mukherjee said, what do you want? So he said, can I do a portrait of you, uh, a drawing of your face? What? I haven't got time, young man. I've got to go to uh, high court. All right, I'll give you only, I think something like 15 minutes or two, uh, whatever. For the uh, a short, very short time. If you can do it, and uh, you, you're welcome. So he produced an absolutely amazing uh, drawing where he captures the, I mean, the formidable look, you know, the sh sh powerful eyes. I mean, you can see why it's called the Bengal tiger. And um, uh, so it's that quality from the beginning. So this uh, ability to capture that. I just want to emphasize this point a little bit. Again, again, I, I use the two uh, words that you have used in the past, the intimate and immediate. I mean, this was not just the portrait of Ashutosh Mukherjee. I mean, you could, you know, go look at the photograph and make a portrait. I mean, in 15 minutes, not only did you make something that looked like him, but something that denoted him, his characteristic. I mean, those eyes, this person. Absolutely, uh, absolutely. Uh, let, let me get that out here, just to, if I can find it. In my book, uh, yes, ab absolutely. But so it's not <laughs> that we're a portrait artist. It's like you know, you've given the you know the portrait an expression. You know what the guy yes, is. and you know, but, but his his mustache, his um, and the eyes are very powerful, and. Um, and he didn't what, wasn't like that while he was getting an oil massage. I mean, he yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but, but you see, he the other thing is very very good. He just concentrates on the face. The rest he asks you to imagine, which is very good. It's a very interesting technique, often done by, uh, you know, uh, Renaissance artists. And so, but you can immediately recognize him. That's the big quality, you see. Um, so, absolutely. It's not just in this work. I mean, even in, in you know, in his father's portraits, for example. I mean, you can see he's done two portraits of his father with, with some difference in the year, then one, the father looks like a very erudite. I mean, you can almost feel the, the, the education and the, you know, the, in, in the father. And the next, he looked much older. It's almost fading away. I and mean, then he's saying- Very interesting. Because, you know, Rembrandt did a lot of portraits from the young age to old age. And so that's interesting, yes. So you can almost see the transition. And it's not just that it's a portrait. And it's, a, it's, a, it's not like a photograph. There's, you know, there's something coming out. It's that softness, is that intimacy. Yeah, expression. So uh, the ability to capture that particular uh, expression and the, yeah, absolutely. Like the, you know, like the abandoned house. Uh, I mean, the house looks abandoned. I mean, you can almost yes, yes. feel the emptiness. And this sort of like, uh, uh, you know, so with the point that we discussed yesterday, in fact, was that, you know, people say academic painters, you know, and then they, uh, put a you know with a broad stroke and they put everything in that category. But 
you know, Atul Bose, uh, Hemen Majumdar, uh, uh, Jamni Roy, when he was doing his academic early portraits, I mean, sure. uh, they were, a, they, it wasn't a pure, like a general portraiture or a general landscape. There was some intimacy or some expression, there was something involved or something. Some, something Absolutely. Involved. And that is a very different uh, 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 thing than just a simple academic portrait. I mean, these guys are not, I mean, they're modernists. I mean, they're, they're naturalists. They're doing something different. I mean, that's, I think that point is missed out on among many. You know, there have been a lot of portraits in India, but when you look at them, the standard one, it just is a kind of very unimaginative, uh, competent job, but it doesn't capture the expression, the particular personality. It's, it's also the personality. But if I, uh, in connection with this, may I also uh, mention the portrait, which I absolutely, my favorite, it is the uh, portrait uh, of his uh, wife, Devjani. Uh, it's an amazing portrait, but even better is the sketch where he actually, uh, what he does again is he applies his Renaissance principles of not uh, just putting down uh, outline, just approximately, continuously sketching to capture that <clears throat> both the solidity but as well as the softness of skin. So every way he, he kind of, I mean, that is one of the finest, I think, drawings in India the, of, uh, you know, naturalist drawing. Uh, there's no question about that. I mean, something which I think is amazing. And um, so I, I've got it here, so just to, yes. Um, soft and as well as incredibly, you know, um, Yes. Even that portrait uh, uh, yeah. this uh, a chalk in a red chalk drawing as well as I mean look at it. I mean I mean the delicacy of the line I mean I mean the outer of the face is perfect you see the two more paintings I'd like to uh, I think we've discussed them again in the past and then of course the uh, Kanchenjunga uh, you almost see the sunlight hitting the peaks and yet the clouds I mean, if you talk to the family, uh, they say that it almost feels the cotton balls have been stuck on the canvas. I mean, that's the kind of softness that comes out. It looks like, you know, something that's just, you know, skimming the, you know, it, it's, it's, very, it's, it's very difficult to see that kind of, again, you know, this is a landscape, but it's not just the landscape. There is that. No, but it, it's, that's the other thing you're right. It's not an epic landscape. It's a very particular, I mean, you are there, you know, we have captured something which is just uh, of the moment. You've captured the, you know, the event, you've captured the, you know, the, the clouds. The moment, the you know, yeah. You've captured the moment and that's something that's, uh, and you've captured the softness, you've captured the, you know, the, just the excitement of seeing the uh, light hitting the peak. I mean, you've almost captured that. I mean, Absolutely. The, to the Kun Rajgir, I mean, you see, you almost feel like a village scene is actually happening in front of you. I mean. Uh, even though it is a, 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 a simple landscape. And that's the kind of softness that I find Atul Bose is very, I mean, obviously an extremely uh, accomplished thinker. Uh, it's it, incredibly accomplished, you know. Uh, I mean, these exercises, they are based on what he learned again, you know, uh, refined at the Royal Academy on the Renaissance pr principle, you know. How do you use a pencil or a chalk or you know how sh how do you shade it? How do you enhance the modeling of the figure or the face? So I mean, my again, I I love those uh, little babies, sort of uh, you know, a small child and you know toddler or a baby. baby. Yes, very I love. I mean, such uh, such amazing lines, very very fine. Can you speak a little bit about his uh, big supporter, uh, Ranu Mukherjee? Uh, yes. <clears throat> And of course, the famous painting of the Academy of Fine Arts. Sorry, yes. Sorry, say it again, I can't, couldn't hear. The famous painting of the portrait of Ranu Mukherjee at the Academy of Fine Arts. Yeah, that was quite a, a very impressive uh, portrait. You know, what happened was, again, I have to be a little personal. Uh, I used to know Ranu Mukherjee, and uh, exactly the reason I also joined the drawing class and Othul Bose, but you see Othul Bose came back from the Royal Academy and he was then offered a, 
job at the art school. But unfortunately, he and the principal Mukulde were at loggerheads. They, they didn't get on at all. As a result, uh, he had this very sporadic teaching career at the art school. It's a pity. And when he first, last became the head of the school within a year or so, I think he had to resign. So that was rather sad. Now, I feel that apart from his fine work, Atulbas also was an organizer. He founded the Academy of Fine Arts, not founded, he did. He was very keen on it, but it was Lady Rehasa, called Ranu Mukherjee, Ranu Mukherjee, who provided the funds and she actually was the patron and created the Academy of Fine Arts and he, he was going to be organizing. And what he did was, what he always wanted, not to uh, go into conflict by reconciliation. I'm just thinking of, sorry, very co contemporary Trump uh, you know, regime. Everything is conflict. But um, if I may say so, Biden thinks much more of reconciliation. And Atulbas, although he wanted to establish his own ideas, he wanted to under uh, reconciliation. So uh, Academy of Fine Arts exhibition had all, you know, Bengal school, academic art, modern art, everything. So that, that was a very, uh, you know, very uh, liberal uh, principle. So that's why Lady Mukherjee, I mean, he became, got to know her very well. And he did a lot of fine, I mean, Mukherjee, I believe Lady Mukherjee, sorry, Rana Mukherjee had quite a lot of his um, works. And this large uh, portrait is very interesting. It's very colorful, very powerfully done. Um, I don't know, I, I, I know it, I haven't seen it for many years. Were you able to see it? I mean, Each time I've been to the uh, Society of Fine Arts, um, it's closed or on strike or something. Okay. Oh, so it's, I've it's, been at least, uh, I'm not, uh, I must have been five or six times. Uh, which, is, uh, which is rather sad. But anyway, yes. So that was a long relationship. And because um, although it was uh, not the greatest thing, but why not? He and uh, Rotin Moitra, the two artists, were there at their academy and they kind of gave advice on art and collection and other things. So this was a very interesting relationship between the patron and the artist. So here's a question for you. Uh, uh, um... You know, here we have an artist like Atul Bos, um, you know, 1920s, uh, a group with Jamini and Himen uh, gets a scholarship uh, to go study at the Royal Academy, uh, does famous portraits uh, hanging currently. And you'd mentioned Surendranath Banerjee. I mean, he's, uh, he's done his portrait. I mean, he's done portrait of Netaji, which is in the Rajbhavan, Calcutta. He's done portrait of Mahatma Gandhi. Uh, which was in Rajkava, and he's done at least three or four large portraits. You know, of course, he got this big contract with Lal Kaka to uh, uh, copy the big uh, portraits of uh, the English, English monarch. monarch. Yes. That's right. And then, you know, uh, and then, of course, he comes back and all, all, all the other portraits and the landscapes, you know, having a, uh, a supporter and somebody like uh, Ranul Mukherjee, uh, you know, until the 50s and 60s, and, and then I guess uh, complete, I mean, a, an important personality, you know, uh, a founder of, uh, you know, or whatever, helped to find the Society of Fine Arts, uh, uh, extremely accomplished. If you see the newspaper archives, some of which we tried to add to the catalog, you know, tons of his showings, lots of press. I mean, he was an important artist at that time, too. I mean, you can clearly make out by all the photographs, by all the newspaper clippings. Of course, 1960s or so, and I think post Ranu Mukherjee, that's it. I mean, uh, no, but you know, it's a sadly neglected. Uh, and only now that we are going through significant reassessment. But also, don't forget this the period of 50s is a period of progressive artists of India, you know, Bombay and Calcutta. So to them, these were terrible, you know, that's dinosaurs. That's started, I mean, that canon or whatever, as you say, that started post-1990, but it almost feels that, you know, I think you also pointed out that it's probably the partition of India and the heavy influx of uh, people into, you know, West Bengal, I mean, and, and change of focus, CPIM, and all of that. I think it, it, it hurt the arts 
skill and the visibility of the artist or the research or the uh, uh, you know the exhibition that should have happened. And we find that um, you know artists like uh, it goes completely. And of course, part part of the problem is you know uh, that he, as you say, a self-effacing personality, right? He always standing at the back and never promoting himself. And the family is the same. I've mentioned to you that I had to meet with them almost for four years and uh, walked out of there, you know, in anger, only to get a call back, you know, next day saying, oh, why are you getting angry, you know? Uh, uh, similarly, yeah, you know, they, I they must, from... must be very protective of the, you know, father mm -hmm. legacy. And, and that's a good thing. And very, very, uh, yes, that, touching. But if you look at the art auction databases, I mean, there have been like three works that have been sold in the last 20 years. Yeah. And so I think that this kind of, uh, Non, uh, you know, not being visible has really hurt the artist. And I'm hoping that this auction, the catalog, and the further discussion that we have, and then kind of at least puts him in, in the right light and his contribution. And uh, it's not just academic art; it's naturalism, it's intimacy, it's softness. It's 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 part of India's one of the paths to modernism, and, and, and he's an important uh, protagonist, or whatever you call it. In, yeah, in yeah. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I mean, what, uh, in, in terms of like, uh, yeah, we've spoken about Ramana Mukherjee, we've spoken about academic art, uh, Avanendra Nath Tagore, I mean, I think uh, you have a good, I mean, you, you went through the context of, uh, you know, the art scene uh, prior to uh, 1920s, prior to Atil Bose. And the 1920s came by, and then after those came in Majumdar, uh, Jamini Roy, and then of course Jamini Roy changed again. Uh, and then we spoke about you know his portraits and all that. So, and do you have any you know kind of closing comments or anything else to say about you know uh, the art of Atul Bose? Or, you know, somebody may just ask a simple question: Why should I buy Atul Bose? Or what's you know what's the relevant? I mean, it's what what what, uh, what would you suggest? And, uh, Oh, what, what, I mean, uh, why should one buy Atul Bose? Is that what your question is? Yes, I mean, simple uh, question. Yeah. No, the thing is that <clears throat> to, to me, and I've always uh, been a great devotee of his work, he's a unique figure. I mean, you don't find any other artist in India who, all artists, the, the outstanding artists anywhere, but also in India have their own take on things, they're, they're their own approach, they're, their own quality and the strength. And what I would say, the Atul Bhosh's strength is this tremendous knowledge of human anatomy, uh, and, and not anatomy in a scientific sense, of the human figure, the, the, you know, his ability to model, his ability to capture that, uh, that I see as a fleeting moment even, and he captures it, great kind of uh, skill. Uh, and um, so in that sense, he's one of the, you know, unique figures. I mean, he would have to be established as a you know, figure with other important figures in our history of Indian art. You know, throughout the, in, 20, in the 20th century, he is one of the important figures. And well, there's no question, but neglected until now. And I hope it, it doesn't, you know, well, one of the things uh, uh, that I've noted on my points, I think I'm just going to bring it up, is that, you know, while we speak about naturalism and, you know, uh, plein air paintings and uh, having a certain softness and let the paintings speak with you, he also had a, a, a difference in that given his training at the Royal Academy, I mean, uh, he uh, was strong, you know, theoretically, and of course, as a, 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 like on perspective studies, uh, uh, he, there's a painting called Sphinx, which is focuses on a study of perspective, and then he, you know, written a small book on perspective. Oh, that, that book is very interesting, uh, rare, and uh, I, I, I have a copy, which I think um, his uh, Shonjit his son kindly gave, uh, you know, me. Uh, yes, it's a very interesting. So what, what's uh, interesting, or even more unique about him, and uh, is that you know we're talking about you know. Indian art or authentic Indian art, you know, landscapes, uh, the Gopal Porsi, I mean, Kanchanjunga, you know, portraits, 
But at the same time, there is a certain amount of theoretical base uh, that is, you know, inbuilt into him with, with his, you know, training, and that's also a little, not entirely been abandoned. I mean, that's uh, a little different than maybe some of the other artists uh, who, who probably trained a little differently. And, uh, you don't see like a perspective study. You don't see like a formal nude study like you see about in you know, with some of the others. I mean, more, you mean you don't see it then anymore? You mean? Well, Himeen is mostly capturing the, you know, the ethos of the, you know, the, the, the wet sari or the Bengali, but the Atul Bose's work is also technically, you know, uh, uh, perfect in a way. I mean, yes, that's very, very, very good. Yes, that's a, and it, what is, you know, training under Sickert, Walter Sickert and the Rauke, I mean, Sickert was a very important painter. I think he had some contact Interesting with Interesting mention Sickert because the Sphinx painting, which is on wood panel, has got a study uh, on reverse, which is, uh, if you look at the color, the browns and all of that is very heavily in influenced by Sigurd. And- uh, Well, you know, his, uh, uh, these uh, uh, the studies of nudes at the studio um, or the art school, it's very sick uh, that the colors, you know, this uh, the, the kind of dull browns and certain, you know, grays, it, it, it's very much in the Sigurd tradition. Um, Yes, yeah, so some of them are. Oh. On the Rabindranath Tagore pastel work, and I'll just put a noun point. Yes, that's it. That's a fine. You see, again, very free uh, sketch, and yet every line is very eloquent, I think. There's nothing <laughs> formal about it. I mean, there's like yellow and, you know, color. Yeah, yeah. <coughs> uh, I mean, you know, you're just... absolutely right. Uh, yes, uh, you know, it, it's a very, very interesting. I mean, very free work, and yet he, with deft, deft um, touches, he captures the man, you know. So this is just I mean, before he passes away, actually. I mean, uh, really? Okay. No, but you see, that's the other quality of the book. His accuracy is, accuracy is not the only virtue in art. I agree. I mean, don't, uh, you know, you can be accurate. Company painters can be accurate, but accuracy also has, a, has an element, you know, a role to play. And with Tilbos, is the foundation of his very fine work is this accuracy. And he had learned his craft of a certain kind. So he was trying to re, in a sense, introduce sort of Renaissance, you know, principles. And that's masterly in his case, I think. I mean, he was a master, no doubt about it. Uh, I just want to make a point on. Uh, I mean, we have an auction coming up, of course, and uh, point on rarity. I mean, the entire estate is, you know, around 50 artworks, which includes around 25 uh, sketches. Um, and, and they're, they're the wonderful, rare, yeah, beautiful sketches, yes. They are, and, and part of the reason for that is most of his large works, like, for example, you know, you mentioned Rana Mukherjee's collection. In the catalog, we have all the uh, portraits that are with the Indian Museum. Then there are a bunch hanging, you know, in the Parliament House and all these other places. I mean, that's where most of his works are. Yes. Uh, yeah. So, uh, you know, it's, it's, and again, that's the reason why we haven't seen too many of his works, you know, come to market because they're all in government institutions. Uh, they're sort of even big, uh, you know, uh, national institutions. They're very much in the, yeah. So uh, uh, I think it is a, a quite a unique opportunity. Uh, you have met Atul Bose, right? Uh, I, yes, yes. I, I, I knew him not too well. I mean, he was uh, a remote figure. I mean, I spoke to him. Yes. And so can we uh, um, maybe... But I've known his family very well, you know, his sons. They drive you as mad as they did to me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so can you, can you summarize, I mean, Atul Bose's personality again? I mean, you've already mentioned self-effacing, standing at the back, and then, I mean, obviously a very accomplished individual, but, uh, uh, you know, I guess he was more about his art, right? I mean, he didn't, you know, uh, wasn't about uh, anything else. I mean, can you sum up? Uh, so you mean, is there anything else uh, to mention, you mean? Yeah, I mean, could you say, I mean, Atul was the man, I mean, you know, obviously an important painter, I mean. I mean, his, his personality, I mean, he didn't put that forward. He, his, uh, uh, you know, uh, important was as a painter. He was a painter, he created those, 
things and that that his reputation should rest on that i mean we don't need to know his life to understand what he was doing you see right so that's why he wasn't one of the romantic figures you know like other a lot of other painters right last but not least i just want to uh, mention uh, you have mentioned that abhinandanath tagore approached portraiture with like you know he said with an inner eye um obviously that message uh, was clearly read by atul bose because i mean you know one of the earliest paintings he did was ashtosh mukherjee and clearly you know the inner eye it's not just a portrait right uh, uh, you can so uh, call it that but, uh, but abhinandanath's notion of inner eye comes from a, a kind of uh, from the theory represented you know by i mean discussed by people like ananda kumar swami and havels so they had this platonic idea that art or beauty rests beyond the realm of the senses it's somewhere uh, above and outside so that was uh, abundas ida rai but you're right in terms of atul bose there's an inner quality of course i mean uh, he that's how he's able to bring out the personality but there is a difference i mean the inner rai is um polemical uh concept and it was uh, sadly used by abhinandanath to differentiate himself from the academic artists he would say academic artists just you know painted what they saw which was not which is materialistic but to be spiritual you had to uh, kind of uh, it's uh, kind of fire the inner eye as it were here's a question for you uh, which is your favorite uh, painting and now you can't say dev jani because the family were I mean, obviously this entire auction is consigned but they have kept that one work back that so, that drawing it's a beautiful one uh, very very fine uh, very they're very close to that obviously yes so. <laughs> but which is your favorite uh, art yes work? i i've been thinking of uh, uh, stealing it <laughs> getting <laughs> <laughs> well you have to be live uh, right after me <laughs> <laughs> yes so we which is your favorite painting in the current offerings i guess that's the question okay, current sorry in the auction that's coming up you've seen oh, oh i see a uh, lots of them i mean there's so many but uh, i mean um the, the ashtas one is in the auction yeah, yes 100% yes i mean that that's a very very fine work um i love some of his uh, nudes for instance in the studio Uh, when he did the uh, royal academy where he uh, did this boat oh, okay. they're very good they uh, works in, uh, that's a piece of history as well i mean let's not forget it was done in mid 1920s and then you know uh, and uh, uh very much so very much so 1920s yes 1926 in fact to be precise uh, but also human uh, you know uh, female figures nudes you know from the back which is wonderful this the i think you also have that sketch in the auction There are quite a few sketches. That's right. Yes, and I I love a lot of them. Yes, they would be definitely my favorite. I, I personally prefer <laughs> drawing to painting. You can tell an artist from their drawing. You know, <laughs> that's not entirely true. But I mean, I, I my weakness because I I personally I also draw, and uh, to me, drawing is so important. I, I share that uh, 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 sentiment sometimes because you know when when an artist. puts together a, a, a graphite on paper and you know slowly builds up a, a story mm. i mean i think you see a lot more of the artist coming out mm. as long as that work is a completed work and not a preparatory sketch you know i mean but no no no, no. but uh, think of other artists who has so many of this wonderful human you know figures drawing uh, not really and even durandar he has hundreds of draw- drawings you know durandar they are not the same as atul bose atul bose is sort of that was masterly see no that's absolutely right all right partha thank you very much this was a marathon you're welcome i enjoyed it <laughs> uh, we enjoyed it uh, greatly and, uh, and uh, good luck with your auction uh, and i i hope uh, the collection goes to a worthy uh, place so you i it was a very funny question you asked uh, we earlier that uh, you were almost worried that uh, when the connection is disseminated that we wouldn't know where it has gone i mean <laughs> so, no, no, that uh, that uh, always worries me as a uh, art historian 
I always like to keep uh, you know tabs on where things go because otherwise you can never go back to it and study it. You know. I'm, uh, I'm hoping that they go to you know good homes and. Uh, well, uh, no, best of luck. I hope so. Of course, I mean, I, it's somebody who would acquire them should be able to appreciate their their value. I mean, he's a very important it's figure. History. It's a piece of history from the twenty. The majority. Very of the important uh, part of history. Yeah, the majority of the artworks are twenties and thirties and forties, you know. So it's. A very I mean, very much part of history, but I would say even more than that, the quality of the works of art, uh, well, quality of the works. I mean, uh, you can be part of history and yet produce something which is very mediocre. No, right. I mean, he, his also uh, quality is great, wonderful. I mean, I'm glad I talked about Atul Bose. He's always been my, you know, really favorite artist. I was and, quite excited to know that he actually met the gentleman. So. Uh, Yes, <laughs> was you know putting in, and so um, well. All right, Partha, thank you very much. Uh, you're welcome. Uh, <laughs> I have a couple more questions, but you know it's been one and a half hours, and I will email you those questions, and we can all. Okay, no, no, sure, I'd be delighted to, uh, and uh, let's keep in touch anyway. Yes, absolutely. Uh, we, uh, yeah, sure. We now that we know that we are uh, uh, related, and uh, I know. Uh, I mean, this is where I mean. <laughs> and et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, absolutely. So, <laughs> it's, it's amazing how these. Well, but in happen. Calcutta, there's always that issue. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so, if you uh, if you uh, uh, probe, uh, the discovery of that was fun. Was like, oh, really? Yeah, yeah. If you will start to probe, you'll find there's so much. <laughs> That's absolutely like sort of uh, branches of tree. Yes, absolutely. Okay. Thank you very much. Oh, uh, you. you're welcome. And um, the end. Also, the photographs you showed uh, said be very nice, lovely. So, well, let, let's. I I hope we'll get out of this uh, pre present unnatural situation. I hope. I don't know. I mean, I uh, I feel I, that. Are you talking about the Trump versus Biden situation, or are you talking no, about that's one. That's a leap of. Uh, <laughs> you have two I'm thinking more of. COVID. <laughs> two situations now, you know. One anyway, is that, 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 uh, 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 Biden situation is improving all the time, so I'm very happy. <laughs> <All right. laughs> but that, that'd be very nice. Let, let's keep in touch. Okay. Take care, Barbara. Oh, okay. Thank you. Thanks. Bye. Lovely. All right. Uh, take care. Take care. Thanks. <laughs>